laten zien dat het medisch is en niet wat ons betreft, per se. Maar in heel Europa zie je dat de boeren echt bewust kapot gemaakt worden. Er wordt voedselschaarste gecreëerd en dat is bewust. En u heeft mooie verhalen, maar dat doet daar niets aan. Op dit moment hebben die boeren, de veehouders in ieder geval, allemaal de portemonnee leeg en de put vol stroom. En ik heb u hele bedragen horen zeggen en hele verhalen, maar er is niets wat daar de komende tijd verandering in brengt. Dus oftewel, er wordt helemaal niets opgelost en ook niets gedaan voor deze mensen. En die problemen die worden gecreëerd, heel bewust, heel bewust. Dat zijn linkse hobby's. Ik heb hier net op de gang ook uh, wat, uh, wat mensen gehoord die daar liegen dus over zijn. Links hobby's. Heeft niets met democratie te maken. De hele burgerbevolking, niemand zit op die linkse hobby's te wachten. Daar is slechts een handje vol. Is gestoeld op leugens. De hele, hele Europese en Nederlandse bevolking staat achter de boeren. Die willen gewoon gezond, betaalbaar voedsel. Niet aan de insecten, niet aan de plantjes. Gewoon normaal voedsel zoals we dat altijd gehad hebben. En om die boerensector te decimeren worden allerlei leugens en milieuproblemen bijgehaald die worden gecreëerd. Dat slaat helemaal nergens op. En ook u staat hier en al die mensen die hier bij de provincie werken, die voeren dat uit. En iedereen verschilt zich achter Brussel. Maar wat is Brussel? Dat is gewoon een stad in België. Die stad die doet ons nu kwaad en er zijn mensen die daar aan de touwtjes trekken. En u en al die mensen voeren dat uit. En die zullen uiteindelijk verantwoordelijk gehouden worden. Wij, wij gaan hier als boeren niet uh, uh, vaak heen met uh, weet ik veel wat voor dingen. Wij uh, zullen ook laten zien dat het ernst is, want waarschijnlijk is de enige manier om eruit te komen niet praatjes, maar gewoon terugvechten, keihard vechten. Wat in Brussel vandaag ook gebeurt, ik heb prijs die boeren, ik heb respect voor de, de moed om het op te nemen tegen de arrogantie van de bestuurders en de regent die over ons gaat, ik heb er respect voor. En dat is misschien hoe we het moeten winnen. En als wij als boeren die slag niet winnen, dan zullen jullie uiteindelijk, en ik spreek jou aan niet persoonlijk, maar als bestuurder, dan zullen jullie zo ver gaan, totdat jullie een, een burgeroorlog creëren in heel Europa. En... Here goes that word again, civil war. See, what is happening is... When people have nothing else to lose, they lose it. When you keep backing people in the corner, guess what? Eventually they will push back. This is why you're seeing all this rioting, right? You're seeing all this protest. You're seeing the farmers fighting back. Because for a very long time now, like he said, they've been creating this scarcity of food. They've been burning up warehouses that store foods, right? They've been buying up uh farming lands bill gates owned a lot of farmlands right there was a time they paid farmers to destroy their livestock so they're manufacturing this scarcity they're manufacturing this famine they are the ones creating it right you heard him talking about it but the farmers have had enough because right now is it's not just a war on farmers is the war on everybody. They want you eating GMO foods. They want you eating insects and bugs. You know, they want you starved out of your mind. There's nothing like hunger. Hunger is painful. When there's nothing to eat, you, you can't think straight. You can't do nothing right. Right? Days, couple of days has gone by. There is no food, no water. Can you imagine your state of mind? So this is what they are doing. So they will put you in a box, right? In that kind of state, when you're so hungry, you will do anything to eat, right? That is what they're trying to do. This is why they're manufacturing this farming. You have to pay attention, man. You have to pay attention. These are not just guys. They have nothing to do and they're just coming out there. These are farmers. They're telling you that this is going on. This is going on with your the food. Very soon, there is a statement that the uh, French president made a couple of years ago. He said, the time of abundance is coming to an end. The time of you stuffing your face with food, Texas Longhorn, you eat your barbecues and, you know, th that is about to come to an abrupt end. And when that happens, what are you going to do? 
all this is about to get real very soon, man. And there is nothing like hunger. Hunger, man, god damn. <laughs> if you've really been hungry, man, and you don't even know where your food is coming from, that is the worst part. You can check that movie out, The Road, right? With uh, that actor, right? Him and his son, they were so hungry, man. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the, it's about to be a reality very soon because that's the whole thing. You control the food, you control the people. They're controlling your food. It's not a coincidence that Bill Gates is buying up all these farmlands. It's, it's not just a joke that all these acres and acres and lands just suddenly catch fire and just burn through. All these warehouses that store foods burn up. You see, you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention, man. You can't just be out here, you know, not, not knowing what time it is. This is uh, Second Esther, the 15th chapter and the 14th verse. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rokhaha Kodash, double on us to apostles and elders of great millstone who taught us this truth and continue to teach us this truth. Peace, salutation. Shalom, shalom, shalom to all you hopeful elect Akiyam out there, you hopeful elect of the brothers and sisters that are of the household of faith. To you, I say shalom, and you brothers that are pushing this truth, shalom to you, and keep pushing and keep believing. We're almost out of here. So yeah, I was watching that, man. You know, they've been doing their protests, even in France and, you know, Germany and all these places, right? All these farmers have had enough. Like you said, there's no more money in their wallet. They're going broke. Not only are they going broke, their farms are being attacked. You see? They can't produce nothing because now they have to fight against big corporations. You know, that own money out of the, you know, out of the wazoo. They have nothing but money, man. So you can't fight against these big corporations, right? They will buy you and everything you own. You see what I'm saying? So they're tired. They're telling you what is happening, that this farming thing, this food scarcity is being done by these guys. Your question now is, why are they doing this? Why are they trying to starve people out? Because... You know, it goes back to that saying, when you control the food, you control the people. So now they can manage to take away your everyday farmers out there. Meanwhile, they'll be the only ones with, you know, access to food, crops, livestock and all that. Guess what? They will control every move you make. You see? So that's why I had to bring this scripture out on Second uh, Ezra, the 15th chapter, and the 14th verse. It says, Woe, woe means destruction to the world and them that dwell therein. So this is what is happening right now. It is incrementally getting worse. It is escalating, right? To the maximum uh, height of it. It says, uh, the 15th verse, For the sword and their destruction draw it nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. He mentioned, what did he mention? Civil war. So all of this is, you know, building up to some crescendo, <laughs> which there will be civil war, people fighting against one another. Why? Why? Well, the scripture goes on to clarify that. The system verse says, uh, For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. Who are their kings nor princes? The modern day kings and princes are your presidents, your governors, your mayors, your senators, right? Congress, all these guys, right? So these are your modern day kings and princes. And he was practically talking to them. So there's no more regard for them, no more respect for them. Why would you respect them? Here they are trying to starve you out. Here they are making life a living hell for you. So this is going to be the sentiment of a lot of people very soon. They'll be like, fuck these guys, right? That's what it's going to be, man. They'll be like, to hell with them. Look at the way they've made life a living hell for each and every one of us. Meanwhile, they're living it up. Think about the movie, uh, uh, hunger games right 
they quarantine you off in districts, you know, barely have nothing to eat. Meanwhile, they're living it up, eating like there's no tomorrow. They have all the foods, they have all the water, you know, they're just living good. So eventually, people will fight back. It will get to the point where you'll be like, to hell with it. I can't live like this. You see, that is what the scripture is telling you here. It says, uh, and the cause of their actions shall stand in their power. So the people, like they say, take the uh, laws in your hands, right? When the justice system fails you, when the government fails you, you know, you take, you take, the, you take action. So that's their power. Their, their, their actions are standing in their power. They'll be like, man, I can't wait for nobody to save me. Trump can save me, you know. None of these guys are going to save me. So people will get to that breaking point where they will fight back, man. It says, a man shall desire to go to a city and shall not be able. Like I mentioned about the Hunger Games, quarantine you off in districts, man. You know, lockdowns, things like that. Uh... Mm -mm. calling the national guard and you know you can't go nowhere it says uh <clears throat> so for because of their pride the cities shall be troubled houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid so when all these things are happening a lot of men will be afraid especially the weak men out here you know we have we, we are living in a town where men have been haven't been this weak this uh, an influx of just straight up weak men, men that don't even know how to do nothing. It is it is pitiful, you know. So that's what it is. So these men that have been brought up to be soft as all hell, brought up to be effeminate. <laughs> guess what? They will be seriously afraid, man. Think of the movie uh, "Leave the World Behind." There were two characters right there. You had the. Uh, the Ethan Hawke character, and he had the Kevin Bacon character. You know, Ethan Hawke didn't know what to do. He was just one of those weak men. He couldn't even find his way without a GPS. You see, that is what this society creates, men like that. And then on the other hand, you have guys like Kevin like Bacon, right? You're, you're, they still have their masculinity about them. They have the wits about them. You know, when all hell breaks loose, they're ready for it. You see? That's the time we're coming into. So which which one are you? Which one are you? It says uh, the 19th verse. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with a sword and spoil their goods because of lack of bread and for great tribulation. So that's what it is, man. He's telling you they're manufacturing this uh, scarcity. They're, they're manufacturing this famine. So when there's nothing else to, to eat, people start looting each other. And they even go further than to cannibalize one another. Think of the movie, the book of Eli. And I mention all these movies because there's nothing, they're nothing but predictive programming. They're telling you uh, what is about to go down. You know, I like this, uh, yo, one of my specialties is just to watch all these uh, apocalyptic movies, man. I love it. Can't get enough of it. You see, because it kind of like push you in that kind of mind frame, man, you know. So that's what's going to happen when there's no food around there. People will loot one another. And when they're done looting one another, guess what? They start eating one another. So that's the limits people will go to quiet their stomach rumblings, man. You know, when your stomach starts rumbling, you know, you start hearing that growl because you are so friggin hungry. Guess what? You would do anything to calm it down, man. Your neighbors start looking like a steak. <laughs> this is this is not a joke, man. Even though it might sound like it, it is not. We are about to face this. We are about to face this. You know? We are about to face, go through this. What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? I know what I'm going to do. I will trust in the Lord. You better trust in the Lord, man. So this is uh, Jeremiah, the 14th chapter. And, and the 11th verse, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people, for their good. So what is happening here is 
look at the way the people are living their life, man. They don't live their life in a righteous way. And when you try to tell them things about righteousness, they fan their hand, man. They don't want to hear it. You know, everybody's on that YOLO, you only live once, so do what's that will type of mind frame, right? Well, the way you live your life, there's a repercussion for that. There is a, a, a get back for that, you see? So we are all about to be judged, man, according to the way you've lived your life. So this is why the Most High is telling Jeremiah, which Jeremiah represents the prophets. And what is a prophet? Somebody that tells you something before it happens, right? He says, pray now for these people for their good. So all these things that is, ha- is about to happen, that is happening, is for the sake of judgment. To rectify all this evil that has been done upon the earth. He says, when they... Fast, I will not hear their cry, and when they offer burnt offering and oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Your disease acts and things of that nature, all of this is just a form of judgment on the inhabitants of the earth because of the way they've lived their life in iniquity, evil wickedness, all kinds of abominations, man. Everything has been done. Look out, look, check out the alphabet community, man. They teach your children to be uh, demented in their minds, man. You know? Young boy, very young, will tell you, I feel like a girl. Something like that is supposed to be an abomination and not even thought of. But it's all happening, man. What do you think all of this is going to lead us? You know, the way the world is right now. Where do you think all of this is going to lead? It's gonna, it's not going to lead any, anywhere good that you can bet upon. This is a, the 13th verse. It says, false prophets. Then said I, ah, Lord power, behold, the prophet said unto them, ye shall not see the sword, neither shall, the, shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. So you have this, your prosperity doctrine pastors, your evangelists and uh, 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 priests and all that, telling you, oh, things are going to be good and, and uh, God will bless you. I pray, you know, you know all those jargon, they be bullshit. They be bullshitting people. Meanwhile, they're scamming you out of your money and telling you uh, this and that, the other. You know, there's not going to be a bad thing or evil. Just pray the evil away. Like we read earlier, you can't pray for these people because this is going to happen. The only way you, you will be good is to live your life righteously. You know, that's the only way, man. Keep the commandments to the best of your ability. Rehearse the righteous acts, right? It says, uh, uh, the 14th verse, Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. So anybody telling you that all this hell is not about to break loose, that's what? It's nothing but lies, man. They're trying to lull you back to sleep, you know? Trying to put put you in a comatose. And this is not what you need right now, man. <laughs> you need to be awake. You need to be uh, fervent in the spirit. You need to be you need to know what time it is and to move accordingly, man. Anybody telling you all this hell is not going to go down, man. <laughs> they don't have your best interest at heart that you can believe, man. It says, uh, uh, I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither speak unto them. They prophesy unto you with false vision and divination and a thing of naught and the deceit of their heart. So this thing is going to go down. Anybody telling you otherwise is nothing but a liar. Very deceptive individuals, man. And a lot of them are being called out. Look at T.D. Jakes, man. <laughs> T.D. Snakes, you know, is now known as the uh, power bottom. <laughs> you know, upper bottom jeans, boots with the swirl. You know, you know what I mean? So, yo, they're all being called out now. It's, it's crazy. But a lot of people still believe in their lies. Guess what? That will be for your own destruction that you can bank on. 
It says uh, the 15th verse, Therefore thus say the Lord concerning the prophets, the prophesy in my name, and I send them not. Yet they say, Sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and by famine shall those prophets be consumed. So this hell that is about to go down is not just going to go down on the uh, regular people out there. It's, it's going to go down on your on, on you false prophets, man. You false teachers. You false ministers. You ministers of Satan. That's what you are. Guess what? You will feel it, man. You're living it up. You know. You've been milking the your congr. You've been milking your congregation. You know. You have your uh, uh, sweet houses and things. Riding your you know, Porsche cars and things, guess what? You're about to catch nothing but hell. You're about to catch nothing but pure hell. And I don't want to be you. This is why you have to be in the good graces of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. You see? So this for you that are seeking to be right. This is this the scriptures for you. Because meanwhile, other people are catching hell. There's always that silver lining, man. You know? There's always that silver lining. So let's get this real quick. I believe it's in Psalms of Sister Fifth. Chat, yep. Uh, it says Psalms Isaiah. Mm. It says, uh, this is Isaiah, the Sister Fifth chapter, and the 13th verse. It says, Therefore, thus saith the Lord our power, behold, my servants shall eat. You see that? So while there's scarcity and you don't know where food is going to come from, guess what? Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah will provide. You have to believe that, man. You have to have that kind of faith. This is why during this grace period we are in is to boost your faith, man. To totally know what you're involved in and to know that Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah got your back. Because... It's going to be so crazy to the point where you will feel like uh, you're all alone. And you feel like the, uh, the God of the Bible, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, doesn't care about you. But he does. But it's all just a test of your faith. Look at what happened to our Lord, Yahweh Shai, before he was crucified. Right? He had that moment of his doubt when he felt like his father, his heavenly father, didn't care anything about him. Right? He had that, man. How much more us will go through that? But you have to persevere through it all, man. You know, you have to endure through it all. You see? So uh, it says, uh, Behold, but ye shall be... Let's read that again, the 13th verse. Therefore, thus saith the Lord our power, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty behold my servants shall rejoice but ye shall be ashamed so there's a contrast right there you know while other people are going through a catching nothing but pure hell the most high will provide for another section of people and the section of that people are the elect you see this is why it's good to right now build up your uh, spiritual bank account so when all hell break loose you can cash in you see you can't cash in, man. People are dying of hunger. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai will provide for you. Just like he provided for uh, uh, Daniel in the, in the lion's den. Just like he provided for Elijah when there was that famine. You know, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai led uh, uh, the prophet Elijah to the woman and the woman's child. And the little food that they had. It was enough for them. It, it never ran out. They kept eating. There was always food. You see what I'm saying? So this is the God we serve. The God of the impossible. You know, Ethan Hunt is quick to tell you they're in the mission impossible. <laughs> How about our God? It tells you that the God of the Bible, with him, there's nothing, nothing shall be impossible. You know, even when you don't know when you're going to get your next meal, guess what? Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah will be right there to provide. So all of this is predicated upon faith. You got to have faith, man. You know? You got to have faith. You see? And don't let anybody, you know, tuck you out of your faith and make you look like it's a bad thing to have faith. You know? You got to have faith, man. You see what I'm saying? That's the only way all of this works. 
the 14th verse, it says, Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry of sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit. <laughs> you see, you don't want to be that man, catching nothing but hell, because, like, you know, in this regard, the famine thing, you know, here it is, your children are just looking at you like, Daddy, what are we going to eat? It's been a couple of days now. You see what I'm saying? That will vex your spirit, man. You will howl for vexation of spirit. You can't provide for nothing. You can't do nothing because there's nothing to do. You see? Meanwhile, others, which are the elect, those that have had their senses exercised by the uh, you know, uh, furnace of adversity that we're going through right now, right? So there's a reason why you go through what you go through is to prepare you, you know, for the times ahead. Meanwhile, other people, that's why the scripture talks about laugh now, cry later. They shall be gnashing and, we, you know, weeping, weeping and gnashing of teeth, right? That's that's the time we're coming into. So you got to have to prepare yourself, man, especially spiritually. So you don't end up with the vexation of spirit, you know? You know, just a little something, man, you know, to... Push your spirit up because it's about to go down. But when it's going down, there's always hope. And the hope is in Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. And with that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Ruchah Kodash, double honors to apostles and elders of Great Millstone.